Let's make the bass from Big Love by True Tiger. You can download this preset along with 189 other useful presets in my pack called Sounds You Know. A link for that's in the description. A quick note about the Sounds You Know preset pack before I continue. I keep adding presets to the pack, but don't worry if you've already purchased it. Once I get to certain benchmarks, I'll send out an email link to download the additional presets, and that's totally free. I'll do that one more time when I get to 200 presets. Anybody who's already purchased the pack can then download all the additional presets for free. Once I get to 200 presets, I'm probably going to raise the price for new customers because there's more product uh, and because the service that I use is taking a larger cut this year. So when I found the request for this base, I followed the link to the YouTube video and I started reading the comments and everyone was raving about the base. And it got me thinking about why it's so appealing. And I thought about this quote from Brian Eno that really resonates with me. He said, whatever you now find weird, ugly, uncomfortable, and nasty about a new medium will surely become its signature. CD distortion, the jitteriness of digital video, the crap sound of 8-bit, all of these will be cherished and emulated as soon as they can be avoided. It's the sound of failure. So much modern art is the sound of things going out of control, of a medium pushing to its limits and breaking apart. The distorted guitar sound is the sound of something too loud for the medium supposed to carry it. The blues singer with the cracked voice is the sound of an emotional cry too powerful for the throat that releases it. The excitement of grainy film, of bleached out black and white, is the excitement of witnessing events too momentous for the medium assigned to record them. I think that Brian Eno quote explains why this sound resonates with so many people, and we'll talk more about that later when we're talking about distortion. So first I'm going to show you how to make this sound with just Vital, using the distortion that it comes with, and then I'm going to show you how you can use a free tube distortion plugin uh, to get the sound even closer to the original. So to get started, initialize preset. I'm going to be using the sine wave from Basic Shapes. I'm going to move it down two octaves, lower phase randomization to zero. And then for the level of this, I'm going to set this to 0 0.128. Now I'm going to open up oscillator two. I'm going to lower this uh, 24 semitones as well. And then I'm going to choose the harmonic series wavetable. Now, since uh, this thing is broken, this blend option, um, I can't move discreetly between waveframes. You can see it's blending in between them. Uh, so one way around that, if you want a specific harmonic, in this case, we want the sixth harmonic, we can go to the wavetable editor here. And one user pointed out that if I put my cursor above whatever wave, uh, whatever keyframe I want, in this case, the sixth one, this number over here corresponds to the wavetable position of that keyframe. So it says 88, so now if I go over here and I right click on the wavetable position and I click 88, now I have the sixth harmonic. Now I wanna control the volume of this harmonic with a macro, so I'm gonna turn down the level and then I'm gonna drag over macro three. So for macro three, I'm gonna set this to 0 0.32. Now I'm gonna lower phase randomization to zero and then I'm gonna make use of oscillator three. Now, oscillator 3 is going to be very similar to oscillator 2, but the big difference is it's going to be direct out. So it's going to be bypassing any of our effects, especially our distortion. So I'm going to uh, set this to basic shapes as well. This one's going to be a sine wave. Lower it to 24 semitones. Lower phase randomization to 0. Turn it down all the way. Grab macro 4, and we're going to control that level with macro 4. But that's not going to be quite loud enough. So if I turn this all the way up, I turn my master down a little bit. I want my sub to be even louder because once I start distorting um, the harmonic and this, um, this copy of oscillator three, uh, it's not gonna be quite loud enough. Um, so we can get even more volume than this, um, even though this is at 100% and the macro is at 100%, I can push it even further and I'll show you. So if I put, if I take oscillator, excuse me, envelope one, and I drag that over to the level of oscillator three, now if I uh, drag macro four over to that modulation amount, 
now I have even more control over the volume of oscillator three. So I might want to turn this down even more. Now it's really loud. It's actually louder than I need it. So I'm going to back off on macro four. I'm going to set this to 0 0.58. So that's pretty useful if you're ever modulating something. And if you think you've turned it up all the way, you might not have turned it up all the way in reality, because if you drag another modulator to that modulation source, you can usually push it past 100%. So let's label this sub and let's label this one harmonic. So now let's add in some tremolo. I'm going to use LFO one for this and I'm going to change the tempo. So I'm going to change it to tempo triplets and we're going to use quarter note triplets. Then I'm going to change the shape to a sine wave just by clicking this curvature icon right here. Then I'm going to make this bipolar by holding shift and then I'm going to drag that over to the level of oscillator two. I'm going to change that modulation amount to 0 0.392. Now I'm going to use macro two to control the amount of tremolo. So I'm going to label this tremolo. And then I'm going to set macro two to 0 0.75. So now that high harmonic is wavering in volume, and that's going to make a big difference when we add in distortion. Now, I love Vital, but one of its only shortcomings, in my opinion, is the lack of any kind of asymmetric distortion curve. The soft clipper, the hard clipper, all these are symmetric distortion curves, meaning that the, this side of the zero crossing is a mirror image of this side of the zero crossing. And when you have that, that when you have that symmetry, basically when you're distorting something, you're adding only odd ordered harmonics to the sound. If it's slightly off, even if it's only slightly off, you're going to get some even ordered harmonics. And those even ordered harmonics are pretty pleasant sounding. They're usually octaves or consonant intervals from the fundamental. So I think tube distortion is highly sought after because of our familiarity with that sound because of how prevalent it is in old recordings, but I think it's also objectively a nice sound because of those even ordered harmonics. So it'd be really nice if this uh, was an option in Vital, but we only have uh, symmetric distortion curves here. So we're just going to use the soft clipper, and you'd be surprised at how close this gets to the original sound. It's going to get you pretty much 90% of the way there. And we'll do a comparison at the end uh, between just using Vital and then using Vital with a free tube distortion plugin. So for now, let's use the soft clipper and let's set the drive to 14.53. Then let's control that drive with macro one. And I'm gonna make it bipolar by holding shift, then drag it over to drive. And then for macro one, I'm going to set this to 0 0.628. Then since this is going to make uh, our preset louder, I'm going to try to prevent that from happening by dragging this over to the master here. Then I'm going to right click on that modulation amount and set this to z uh, negative 0 0.06. So adding in that tremolo, I think, really helps generate that sound of pushing against the boundaries of our medium. Um, and pushing against the boundaries of that medium, um, that medium being the ceiling um, that this soft clipper is providing. Basically, you know, this is the sound of, of hitting uh, maximum volume, and then that's distorting the wave uh, form and since it's a soft clipper, it's not going to be quite as harsh as, let's say, the hard clipper. Because putting those sharp edges into the curve will generate even higher harmonics and more distortion. So now that we've added in that, let's add in a filter. So this filter right here, I, I was just hearing something. I was hearing a harmonic that I didn't really hear as much in the original. And that might just be a side effect of using 
the soft clipper instead of some tube distortion. Um, so anyways, I set this to digital and then I set this to notch spread. And then I want this just to be cutting out a frequency. So I drag blend all the way over to the right and I keep it at zero, but keep uh, key tracking up 100%. Then for the resonance, I set it to 90. Sometimes with these notches, if you turn up the resonance too high, you get feedback from that signal and it actually becomes louder. So I just have that at 90%. And now it's gonna be cutting out, uh, let's see, the frequency two octaves above my fundamental. So take a look over here. It's that one right there. If I turn it off, it's quite a bit louder. So now that we have that filter in place, let's add in an EQ. So this EQ is gonna be important because I want to cut out anything near my sub because I want that sub to be unaffected by the tremolo. Um, I don't want it to be changing volume at all. Um, and since this sub right here is going direct out, it won't be affected by this EQ. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a high pass here. I'm gonna set the cutoff. Actually, I'm gonna turn that down first. I'm gonna make this key tracking by dragging over note, then right click on that modulation amount, make it bipolar. And now this will follow every note that we play. And then I'm gonna set the cutoff here to 69. So now when I play a note, you can see it's starting to cut off everything below um, oscillator two. So with that in place, I'm gonna set the resonance to eight. And then I'm gonna turn on the band here. And for the band, let's make this, uh, I'm gonna switch the unit to Hertz. So go to advanced frequency units and Hertz, and then go back to effects. And I'm gonna set the cutoff here to 230. Then I'm gonna set the gain to three. And I'm gonna set the resonance to four. So that's just giving us kind of a low mid range boost. And then finally, let's turn on this high pass here. I'm gonna set the cutoff for this to 1658, 1658. And then resonance for this one will be at five. So it looks like we're cutting out a lot, and we are, but keep in mind, we're not cutting out the sub here, we're just cutting out the sub here, because this sub is actually getting affected by the tremolo, because both of these sounds are going into our distortion module together. Um, so we wanna cut out this frequency and just add it back in here. So now we're left with this. So one last step for the effects here, we're gonna add in some reverb. And once again with this, we're gonna have to be careful not to add any sub to the reverb because we're not cutting it out completely right there. So for the low cut here, I set this to, let me make sure this is, yeah, this is still in Hertz. So for low cut, let's set it to 145. Same thing for the cutoff here, 145. And then uh, let's set the gain all the way down to cut out some of the low frequencies. Then I'm gonna turn up the chorus amount to 10. I'm gonna lower the chorus frequency to 0 0.175. I'm gonna set the size to 40. Then I'm gonna set the time pretty long to 3.75. And then for the mix, let's set this to 30%. And now let's hear that. Now, one important thing I need to do, I need to set the voices to one 
because uh, you don't want more than one of these low notes playing at the same time. That gets really muddy. Then I'm gonna turn on legato so I can blend between notes. And then I'm gonna set some glide time so we'll slide between notes. I'm gonna set this to 0 0.1 seconds. And then I usually like to add just a little bit of slope. Um, and in my original, I set this to negative 0.85. Now this sounds pretty good, but there's one more step to make it sound more like the original. This sound is a little bit too bright, so I'm going to add in a low pass filter. I'm going to do that after the distortion. So I'm going to click post here. I'm going to lower the resonance all the way down. And then I'm going to set the cutoff to 440. Now I'm going to set the volume. And I'm going to label this macro. So this is our distortion. You could call it drive. So anyways, that's how you make the preset with just vital. So now let's go through uh, some free tube distortion options that we can use to get this even closer to the original. Now before we mess with some third party plugins, I wanted to mention a couple of things I did um, that I thought sounded pretty good. In the original, I noticed that uh, the sub wasn't just purely a sine wave. It seemed like there were also some harmonics coming from the sub that weren't affected by the tremolo. So I just added in a little bit of that octave there, a little bit more of this um, third harmonic here. I skipped the octave here, and then this little major third, I gave that a little bit as well. Um, so it's, it's very subtle. I wouldn't overdo it but now it's gonna sound a little bit beefier. I think I added just a little bit too much of this one right here. And now I'm just being a perfectionist. Another thing that you can do to kind of make it sound a little bit more gritty, um, especially if you don't have that tube distortion, you're not getting as many harmonics. You can go to this uh, keyframe right here and just add in some of those harmonics that you want. So one thing I did was I added in this uh, minor seventh here. Okay, so if I'm playing a C, you know, this big harmonic here is a G. This would be a B flat. And I'm going about a third of the way up. I'm skipping the octave here. This would be a C if I'm playing a C. And this would be the ninth, this would be a D, and then this would be sort of an E, like a really flat major third right there. Um, so let's hear what a difference that makes. So it just adds a little bit of grit to it. It's very subtle, but I kind of like the way it sounds. Okay, so now let's do this with some tube distortion. Now, in order to use our own third-party effects, we're gonna to have to split this preset into two different tracks. So one track is just gonna have oscillators one and two, and then you're gonna turn off all the effects here. Then after that instance, you're gonna add in the tube distortion, you're gonna add in your own equalizer, cutting out the lows, and then you're gonna add in your own reverb, um, also cutting out the low end for that as well. Um, and the reason you have to use your own plugins is because there is no vital effects uh, like Serum has Serum effects. Now, I still think vital beats Serum in just about every other way, but Serum does have Serum effects and Serum does have its own tube distortion. So it has that going for it. So anyways, um, once you've done that, for your other track, you're just going to turn on Oscillator 3 it's already bypassing the effects, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and that has zero effects after it. It's just going direct out. That's just our sub. Now, if you're watching this before January 5th, 2023, you have access to this amazing free plugin called Little Radiator by Sound Toys. This is an emulation of a classic piece of gear, the Alltech 1566A preamplifier which adds tube distortion. 
Now, for, to use this is pretty simple. We have this heat knob here, and that's basically like the drive. Now, if I right-click this, I can show you the amount I put in was 10.05 decibels. I have bias off, I have noise on, and I have mix all the way up. So here's what it sounds like uh, with just vital, and then I'll show you what it sounds like with the little radiator. Now with the little radiator, Now you're also hearing the difference um, of the different EQ and the different reverb that I added in. Um, so it's not just the difference of the, uh, the tube distortion, but that is most of the difference. Now, if you're watching this after January 5th, or if you just want another option, there's another really great uh, 1566 emulation uh, that's completely free. And this one is called the Shatter Glass Audio SGA-1566. And it actually gives you more options than the little radiator, um, and it sounds almost the same. So let's compare now the SGA-1566 uh, with the little radiator. Um, so this is the SGA-1566. And now here's the little radiator. SGA, little radiator. So they're very similar. I think the little radiator is a little bit warmer. It sounds a little bit more like an actual old piece of equipment to me. I think maybe they did a better job of actually emulating some of the quirks um, of the unit that they were working with, whereas the SGA is a little bit more clean, but you have a little bit more control. So with the SGA, um, I was also using quite a bit of a treble cut here. Um, so I cut that down about halfway. So anyways, I think they're both great plugins. Um, they're both free right now. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in the future Sound Toys uh, releases Little Radiator again for free. So anyways, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.